Thanks for joining us today. In this session, we will speak about installing and activating Active Directory Federation Services 2.0 for Office 365. You'll first want to log into your Microsoft Online portal, click under Users, and then active, and then Single Sign-On Setup. What you will want to do is first read the Prepare for Single Sign-On and pref plan for and deploy ADFS 2.0 for single sign-on. The next thing you will want to do is to install the Microsoft Online Services module for Windows PowerShell as, long, as well as the Microsoft Online Services sign-in assistant. You'll need to verify whichever domains are going to be used, prepare for directory synchronization, enable directory sync, and install directory sync onto a server located on your uh, on your network. Once you've verified directory sync, you can then go through and activate your users and verify and manage single sign-on. In order to deploy ADFS, you'll need to go to downloads.microsoft.online downloads.microsoft.com and download the latest version and for whichever server that you need to. Uh, it will install under Windows 2008, either 32 or 64-bit, or Server 2008 R2 64-bit. Once you have it downloaded, you can install. It will verify that you have PowerShell version 2, which is default to Server 2008 as well as the modules and the sign-in assistant. Go ahead and hit next, accept the terms, and next again, and create a federation server. Uh, the install is the exact same for the server or proxies. Go ahead and hit next, and hit next again. Once the setup is completed, go ahead and check start the ADFS 2.0 management snap-in when the wizard closes and click finish. Once you have installed the software you will see a screen that says that you will need to perform the initial configuration first. Go ahead and click on that link. I've skipped that today because all it is is indicating the certificate to be used for this process. You will notice that once that's finished you'll see that it is required to add a trusted relying party. Uh, we are going to ignore that because we're going to be adding all of the rest of anything that ADFS needs through PowerShell. Please open up PowerShell uh, and more specifically it's a Microsoft Online Services module for, uh, for Office 365 or for Windows PowerShell. Go ahead and open that with the admin creds. All right, once you've opened that with administrator credentials, we are going to uh, create a credential variable. And put our Office 365 admin creds into it. And then we will connect to the Office 365 endpoint and specify our credentials. Once that's done, if you are performing this from a remote location, you will be using the set msol adfs context dash computer and then the server name. Since we're running this from the ADFS server itself, we do not have to do that. So we are going to assume that you have a domain verified in Office 365 that you want to use. 
and so we are going to convert it to federated. And since I've already done this, you'll see an error indicating that it has already been done. As you see, it says this domain already used a single sign-on, but otherwise you would see a, an indication that this has completed. The next thing you want to do is, the next thing that needs to be done is to uh, download and configure the Microsoft Office 365 Federation Metadata Update Automation Installation Tool. Very long name for a tool that basically sets a scheduled task to automatically update Office 365 when uh, a change is made to your token signing certificate, the SSL cert that we indicated earlier. So. The easiest way to get this information is to go to the uh, the installation instruction documentation. Uh, you can type in a Bing search for install Windows PowerShell for single sign-on and make sure that it's for Office 365 and just select the link for the download. Alright, and go ahead and download the task installation and select I agree and there is a warning indicating that it cannot be verified but go ahead and open it anyways and you will notice that it is a PS1 or a PowerShell script go ahead and copy this information or, one of the easiest ways, is simply go to the location where it was downloaded to. And that is your downloads folder. Alright, so in PowerShell, go ahead and navigate to wherever you downloaded it to. Alright, now that you've navigated to where you've downloaded it, go ahead and run the, the script. And if you get a message indicating that you cannot load the script because execution of scripts is disabled on the system, uh, you just have to set the execution policy. To unrestricted. Go ahead and select yes. And now you can successfully run the script. So first it asks what the federated domain is. In this case, it is insecurityinc.info. Go ahead and hit enter, confirm it. Hit enter. The MSOL username is the admin for your Office 365 tenant. and then it will validate. Once it has validated, you then insert the password for the user you are currently logged in as. It needs to be a locally logged in administrator. Go ahead and hit OK, and once it is is convert confirmed it will run update dash msol federated domain on a regular scheduled task all right the next thing that we need to do is verify and manage single sign-on now that we have our client on and this is on an internal network we navigate to the portal and one thing that you want to make sure of is that you have, have your domains and more specifically the ADFS server indicated 
as one of the trusted sites on your intranet sites so that credentials can be passed automatically. What will happen at this point is when you enter in your username, you select, uh, well, you simply get automatically redirected once you hit connect. Uh, I have the certificate error since it's a self-signed certificate and you're automatically logged in without having to enter in any credentials other than your email address and that's only for the first time that you log into that page and once you have access to that you have access to your Outlook web app which you can then log into without a problem as long as you're signed into the portal you can access the portal Outlook and SharePoint all at the same time without having to log in for each individual. Ah, and since I currently don't have any SharePoint site collections created, I can't access it. All right, and now that we've verified that, we will then go through and verify that you can access from outside the network. Now in order to get this to work outside of the corporate network, you need to install an ADFS proxy because I would hope you would not put your ADFS server connected to the internet. So to start, you need to set it up the exact same way as your ADFS server. You need IAS, you need .NET Framework 3.5 SP1, and you need the Microsoft Online Services module for Windows PowerShell as well as the sign-in assistant. Once you have those installed, go ahead and launch the ADFS setup. And instead of setting up the ADFS server, you'll set up the ADFS proxy. Federation Server Proxy is the second option. Select Next. Verify that everything in here has been successfully set up and select next once that's completed go ahead and select start the ADFS 2.0 federation server proxy configuration ser wizard when this wizard closes lots of words just check it and click finish and select next Make sure that you indicate the ADFS ser service, which in our case, it will be the name of the server for the ADFS server. Uh, when you set up a cluster, it will be the service name that you used for the cluster. Select test connection to verify that everything's working. Hit okay. Select next. You will need to input your administrator creds for your domain. will select next everything will be configured the warning indicated or the this part indicated a warning because I've already installed the required parts select close and now you can test one part that I do need to mention before we move on to testing is that if you're setting up, up a cluster, or if you have difficulties setting the service for your ADFS, you will need to use the set SPN command. And you can do that through the DOS prompt or command shell. And you will need to use set SPN A and then HTTP, because this is an HTTP connection, or HTTPS, I don't think it actually differs. You set the name of the service, and then you set the name of the s server. And in this case, they're both the same. Uh, and actually, I think I have that backwards. It's server here, and then service name here. It'll say it's registering the principal server name, or service principal name, 
or SPN. It will give confirmation and then you can go through that wizard as well. And once that indicates success, you're done with that and can go on to testing. Now, on to the testing. What you'll need to do to test is log into a machine outside of the corporate network or not connected to any of your DCs. You will want to navigate to the same URL. Go to portal.microsoftonline.com And when prompted, type in your username. Select sign in at your domain. We will get a certificate prompt because we're using a self-signed certificate, but otherwise you'll be directed straight to this site. You can use either your UPN or your domain creds. Select sign in and you're brought directly into the portal. You now have access to the front page as well as Outlook and Power or uh, SharePoint as well if you have permissions to it. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you had a great day.